from the KFC Yum Center in Louisville. It is round one of the NIT. The two seed, the Louisville Cardinals, playing host to the seven seed, the Northern Kentucky Norse. The winner of this game will get the winner of Middle Tennessee and Vermont. Alongside former ACC head coach Dino Gaudio, I'm Anish Shroff. It's an interesting matchup because you've got Louisville coming off the disappointment of not being in the NCAA tournament. How do they respond? Well, for Northern Kentucky, the Horizon League regular season champs, this is an opportunity against in-state Goliath. And he's two years in a row, Northern Kentucky has a dream matchup in postseason. Last year it was Kentucky in the NCAA tournament, a close loss, 79-70. And tonight, Louisville in the NIT. It's a dream matchup for NKU, for their fan base, for recruiting, and for recognition in the state. Louisville on the season, 9-9 nine and nine in the ACC. But there was some chatter leading up to this game as to how motivated the Cardinals would be. There was a report in the Courier-Journal that before the ACC tournament, the players voted against accepting an NIT bid, but there was a players-only meeting Sunday after the selection show. No one's quite sure what went on during that meeting, but here are the Cardinals in the first few minutes should be telling. Louisville, a major size advantage on the interior. Let's see if they try to establish their big guys early. A lineup change for the Cardinals. Raymond Spaulding will come off the bench. He's got a lower back injury, did not practice. So Dwayne Sutton, who's got the ball, getting the started stick. Honest Mahmoud, the seven-footer from Egypt. And the first basket of the game. The old school running hook. And he has such length and extension on that shot, and he's tough to try to contest it. Drew McDonald, 34 in black. Now it's LeVon Holland, a homecoming for Holland, who played his high school ball at Ballard here in Louisville. His teammate was Quentin Snyder. And V.J. King, uh, the sophomore from Cleveland, gives Louisville a 4-0 lead. And a great start for the Louisville Cardinals. Wondering if they come out with energy and emotion. Looks like they have early. Well, the NIT likes to experiment with new rules, and a few of them will go with 10-minute quarters instead of 20-minute halves. Once you get to five fouls in a quarter, there's no single bonus, double bonus. You go right to the penalty, two free throws. Off an offensive rebound, the shot clock resets to 20, a wider paint, and a deeper three-point line. Well, the deeper three-point line didn't affect Drew McDonald. He knocked that one down from that right corner. And he is a big guy that could stretch the defense. Sutton is fouled on the way up. Well, Dino, earlier today, you tried to explain what these new rules will mean for both teams. Four new rules are being implemented for the NIT, two of which will see additional lines on the court for tonight's game. The first one is the three-point line. Traditionally to the college three-point line, 20 feet, nine inches. We're moving it back an additional foot and eight inches, which is the international line. Let's see how that affects three-point shooting tonight. The other thing is the widening of the lane. The college lane is 12 feet in width, from black line through the paint to the near black line. Well, they're expanding it to the NBA width, which is 16 feet. Keep an eye on guys posting up tonight in the lane. If they're inside the NBA line, that's a three-second violation. The widening of the lane, looking for opening the court, more freedom of movement, and ideally, more scoring. Dino, do the extra lines impact players? You know what, Anisha, times they will. And I think sometimes we're going to find out tonight, especially, I think, on post-ups, because guys are so used to poaching, posting up just outside the paint area. Let's see how many three-second violations we might have tonight. Yeah, as you illustrated, the paint is wider, but the areas where it's been widened is not painted. Exactly. So guys are just naturally, and you know, it's human nature, do what you've been doing forever to post up just outside the lane. Be interesting to see how it impacts this game. I, you know what, Anisha? I love all of the rules. I, I think they're all really good, and it's going to ideally shorten the game, especially
especially the five fouls per quarter, per quarter because, Sutton. hey, after that first quarter, you got a clean slate. Tip in there by Sutton, the UNC Asheville transfer. McDonald for three, short, rebounded by Sutton. And the reason he's out on the perimeter, Anish, is to draw Mahmoud out away from the basket. It's the guy with 99 block shots on the season. Mahmoud led the ACC in blocks, off with the left hand. And here comes LeVon Holland, second team all-conference. Three-pointer no good by Jordan Garnett. And Dan Goodell, Louisville's leading scorer, pushing. And he is bumped on the drive by the redshirt freshman Jalen Tate. I'm thinking Northern Kentucky would spend a little more time on the offensive end of the floor. In other words, slow the pace a little bit. They're running their flow offense, NKU, which is a continuity ball screen offense. But let's turn it over once or twice. In other words, move the ball from one side of the floor to the other. Make Louisville play defense. Ray Spaulding checks into the game for Louisville. Two high ten. school teammates on each other right there, Holland and uh, Snyder. Here's V.J. King, guarded by former Cardinal Tyler Sharp. 15 in black, was a walk-on for Louisville a season ago. <laughs> he knows these guys better than anybody does, right? He was guarding them last year as a walk-on for the Cardinals. McDonald looking for help, finds a cutter, and Dantez Walton off the window. Walton starting his fourth straight game, and he wasn't really much of a scoring threat for most of the year, but double digits in his last two outings. Where you're seeing the diversity of McDonald's game. A big guy that's a center could step out and make that pass on a backdoor cut. And there is Snyder, rebounded by Drew McDonald. First team all-conference forward. Setting the screen for Holland. McDonald has the mismatch, backing down Snyder. And it takes advantage. And, and you know what, Anish, that's a smart team. Really good recognition. What you saw Louisville do with, doing was switching the screens. And when they saw the mismatch, they went right inside to the big guy. King kicks to Snyder. Open three. Good. He has been on fire from behind the three-point line. In ACC play, 46% from behind the line. Howland over Spalding. Unable to answer. Rebound, Dan Goodell. Spalding down low. There's the switch again. Got right, got right. Woo! Such diversity with the Louisville guys in each. They can switch all of that ball screen, all five guys. Spalding, that's a three. Remember, that three-point line is a foot and eight inches further than normally. Garnett, now it's Walton. Well, Louisville's defense pushing NKU out further on the court away from the basket. Really good pressure defense. Shot clock at three and beating it oh. is the Louisville native Holland. And that's a perfect possession for NKU. Deep into the clock, and he's a guy that could create with a short clock. He's the catalyst for this Norse offense. Adele. Kentucky regular season champs in the Horizon League picked off early in their conference tournament in an upset at the hands of Cleveland State. Holland gets it back and it's knocked out of bounds off Spalding. Norse ball when we come back. David Paget's team had to get over the disappointment quickly. Some strong words from Louisville yesterday regarding their NIT fate. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Chase. Make more of what's yours. And Land Rover, above and beyond. 
back here at the Young Center, Anish Shroff, a long shot, former ACC coach Dino Gaudio. Both of these teams had NCAA tournament aspirations. Both coaches talked to us about mentally recalibrating both the players and the coaching staffs for getting ready for this tournament. What do they mean by that? You've been in this situation. And Anish, we had a team at Wake Forest that had gone to three straight NCAA tournaments. And then all of a sudden, we got into the NIT, and we're telling them the history of the tournament, going to New York City. But you know what? There's disappointment in not being in the big dance. But as a coach, you look at, man, their energy and emotion in practice yesterday, and even in warm-ups today, their body language. Are they talking to one another? And you got to be careful, some guys. It's their last go-round, showcasing their individual skills for the next level. But I'm going to tell you something. Early on, I haven't seen those things out of Luba. I've seen energy and emotion, guys playing hard, playing well, and uh, looks like they want to be here. They were loose in pregame now, smiling. But you know what? That's a sign of an experienced team as well. I think there was more attention paid to Louisville's pregame body language than anything else. Probably too much scrutiny from the early returns. If you didn't know the context or the prologue, you wouldn't think anything different of Louisville. No, you you got to know your team, too. Like at, at times, I'd be in the locker room and my assistants would come in and go, man, we didn't have a good warm-up. So then I'd be mad. I'd be barking at those guys. But you have to know the makeup of your team. And that's what they are. They like are a cool, relaxed team. Louisville pushing. Here comes Snyder, the senior. Now Darius Perry. It's his 19th birthday today. Oh, and Spalding down low, taken away by Chris Vogt. Here comes Carson Williams, who as a freshman last year, scored 21 against Kentucky in round one of the NCAA tournament. And these, these guys are all learning, like, the best place you can ever be is in the gym. If you love something, you'll make time. If these guys weren't playing here today, you know where they would have been this afternoon? They'd have been in a practice gym, both of them, going shirts and skins. That's what they'd have been doing. One thing David Padgett talked to us about before the game, he said, this is the closest team that he's ever been around. And he said, it's a veteran group. They genuinely like being around each other. He thought that would manifest itself on the floor as Spalding misses. But at the same time, you know, you think about how close Louisville was. They were right on the bubble on Selection Sunday. And didn't really have any bad losses on the resume, and I think it all boils down to that regular season game against Virginia. If Dangadell inbounds the ball, Louisville's not in the NIT, they're in the NCAA tournament. And, and when you say inbound the ball, we're talking nine-tenths of a second. I mean, that's all they needed to do, and they beat the number one overall seed, Virginia, and you're right, they're dancing right now, but here they are in, you know, one of the great historic tournaments in all the country. There is David Padgett pacing the Louisville sidelines, acting head coach. His future, very much a question mark. What happens once Louisville is done? And uh, whether it's here, whether it's somewhere else, the way he's handled himself this season is going to get him a lot of looks. And uh, John Brennan on the Northern Kentucky sideline. This is just the second year in which the Norse are eligible for the postseason. Last year, in their first year, they get to the NCAA tournament. This year, regular season champs in the Horizon League, now in the NIT, facing a team 100 miles down the road. Williams leading the break, and the basket is good. How about the Norse? They've got the lead, 12-11 late in this first quarter. Anish, I talked to guys in the Horizon League, a couple head coaches, and they're saying this team who won the regular season in the Horizon, talented enough to take down Louisville. All things being an e equal. If Louisville's even ready to play, this is a really well-coached basketball team. McMahon in the corner, hits the three off the great feed from Perry. Well, dribble, dribble penetration will break your defense down. It collapsed, they had to provide help, which created the avenue for the pass and ultimately the shot. Williams, former Mr. Kentucky in basketball. Now it's McDonald, 15 to shoot. Sharp down the lane, out of control. And we got a foul against Louisville and Darius Perry, his first. Boy, I think he just might have fell of his own volition right there. Tyler Sharp, his sophomore walk-on at Northern Kentucky. A walk-on last year at Louisville. 
What do you think, Dino? Nah, he just tripped himself. His right foot went down there, and uh, bad call. A lot of basketball to be played right now, though. And how about this guy? He is a drop-dead three-point shooter. As you mentioned, Anise, walk on for this team last year, now playing against them. For this young guy, dream come true. He averages almost seven points per game. That's second nationally among walk-ons. Only Brock Steptoe from Hawaii averages more. Three from Perry. No good. And the rebound to Holland. Tate skipped past to McDonald. That's a good call. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. He lifted and moved his pivot foot. A Wednesday night, an NBA doubleheader. It starts in Boston with the Celtics hosting Bradley Beal and the Wiz. That's an eighth and Lonzo and the Lakers at Oracle to battle KD and the Warriors. You pointed out a story to me before tip. Warriors party too hard for Steph's birthday? I said, they, they said they party too hard for his 30th birthday and they had to cancel practice. Hey, we're just talking practice, so. Oh. Yeah, How many guys in the league can get away with that? <laughs> Seven? Yeah, I don't even know if it's seven. I know one of them, though, is Steph Curry. Holland. You saw the shot clock reset to 20 off the offensive rebound. It'll stay with the Norse. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is Curry and that other guy up in Cleveland, LeBron. Hey, hey Anise, when you talk to guys on the horizon, they say that NKU's baseline out of bounds. It's so difficult to defend them. The teams just get frustrated and play zone. Let's Why? keep an eye on this because a lot of action, and believe it or not, we did a clinic together, and John Brandon stole our baseline 1-4-0 Bs. Out of the inbounds, here's Tate. That time he turns it over. Louisville looking to push. McMahon leading the break. Lays it in for two. That's Louisville basketball right there. The turnover, the run out, and the finish on the other end. That's the way David Padgett wants to play. And I'll tell you what, in this NIT game, what a great atmosphere in the Young Center. Final seconds of this first quarter, and it's Holland, the Louisville native, and the Norse within one at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, the quarter format in the NIT. Louisville in transition. They were running to credit the Norse. Hanging with the mighty Cardinals after one. In Louisville, NIT first round at Northern Kentucky and the Cardinals. And a kickball that time against Louisville and Malik Williams. Both of these schools separated by 100 miles. Northern Kentucky from Highland Heights outside of Cincinnati. Just up 71. What a job Brandon. that guy has done in this. Road Scholar were finalists when he was playing at Marshall, played for Billy Donovan, and then Billy went and took the Florida job, led the Southern Conference in scoring his senior year, Southern Conference Tournament MVP as well his senior year. Carson Williams muscles it off. The rebound to Williams, Malik Williams. Ryan McMahon, sophomore out of Sarasota. Over to Perry. And all those ball screens on the side, you're seeing Northern Kentucky ice them, which means they're trying to force the ball down towards the baseline defensively. McDonald rips the rebound down after the second and third effort by Wara. A little teardrop does not fall for Holland. But I think John Brandon has to be really happy with the shot. That's what they're looking for in transition. Northern Kentucky, one of eight from three in the first quarter. Williams will launch, misfires. And the Norse, not really a great three-point shooting team to begin with, better when they attack inside. Well, Northern Kentucky hanging tight, and the big reason why is Drew McDonald and the diversity of his game. The big guy on the backdoor pass, Louisville switched the ball screen, Snyder's on him inside, and man, when that ball goes below the foul line, you gotta play like a man, and Drew McDonald does. I had a chance to talk to his parents, Christy and Jeff, before the game. Mom, Christy played basketball at Northern Kentucky and then coached varsity basketball at the high school level. 
as Drew knocks down a three. And she said from the very beginning, Drew was a basketball gym rat. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? How far back are we going? She said, he used to play basketball naked in the garage when he was a year and a half old. <laughs> Hey, I, I would have just taken the basketball, not the uh, the naked stuff right there. Listen, I told her, I said, can I tell that story on the air? She had no problem. So before I walked away, I said, I'm going to tell that story on the air. Is it okay? You know, this is coming from the parents. And Dad Jeff looked at me and he said, no, 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 no. It's not coming from Dad. It's coming from Mom. Short clock right now for Louisville. Wara. There's McDonald again, who averages nine and a half rebounds. He's been a double-double machine, and in the Horizon League, a matchup nightmare. A long arm to Jalen Tate. McDonald, crafty move, but had it knocked away by Wara, but will get a foul against Louisville. Well, there are his parents, Christy. And Jeff, Christy in the black sweatshirt. Jeff in the black and white sweatshirt. Jeff, a really good tennis player at NKU. Mom, you mentioned, and he's played basketball there. And Drew was telling me at shoot around this morning that when Christy would be coaching up her girls' team, you know, young Drew would be on the side shooting, and every now and then, Mom would look over and say, Drew, elbow in. <laughs> Elbow in, always correcting, always coaching. Well, you know what? She did a darn good job with that young guy right there. That one in and out. But halfway down, they better understand that that kid could shoot the basketball. You need to be there on the catch on him. Louisville has a quickness advantage with him, so press up on him. Louisville down by four. Perry in traffic, able to draw the foul. Early in the second quarter, Christy McDonald. She's got a lot to cheer about. She's nervous too, but her son's team has a four point lead. Northern Kentucky with a four-point lead on Louisville, round one of this NIT. It's the path to Madison Square Garden and New York, which will host the semifinals and finals. It is the second quarter, and if you're joining us and you're looking at the score, no, not the second half. We have a quarter system for the NIT. They're trying that out. And for Louisville, Anas Mahmoud said yesterday he wasn't sure if his team would be emotionally ready for the NIT. Cardinals, they are one of the wallflowers left to watch the big dance in the NIT. Nine ACC teams got in. Three heading to the NIT. Boston College, which that's where they belong. But Louisville and Notre Dame did have cases to be in the NCAA tournament. And Ace, for me, it's Notre Dame, I think, without Bonzi Colson. I think that's a top 20, at, at, at worst, a top 25 basketball team. And uh, you got your Syracuse Orange in there, and I'm not sure about that one. And if they, I'm not sure about if, that one either. If they, if they scrub Syracuse and Notre Dame, for, for me, it comes down to head to head. And the Irish go into the Carrier Dome, beat the Cues with Albonte Colson. But uh, I, I just felt Notre Dame, they, they would put extra emphasis on not having Bonzi, and now that he's back, but not to be. Garnett from the outside. In your eyes, Dino, did Louisville belong in the NCAA tournament? I, I don't think they, they, they do, Anish, but I know this. If they'd have taken down Virginia, which they absolutely should have. They're in. They're in. The number one overall seed, the number one team in the country, they absolutely would be playing the NCAA tournament. A foul against Northern Kentucky. Here's Louisville's resume when they go by the quadrant system. Louisville only had three quadrant one wins, only two quadrant two wins. Beat Florida State twice, Virginia Tech twice. You add Virginia to that list, the number one overall seed. I'm with you, Dino. I think they're in, and it's the regular season loss to Virginia that will sting Louisville. David Padgett told us today he'll be haunted by that game the rest of his life. Up by four with less than a second to play. It was just a series of unfortunate events after a series of unfortunate events. And he, he started to say it in the little meeting we had pregame with him. Like, 
I, I wonder if I should have called a timeout. I go, David, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't even go there. We all rack our brains about losses we had. Should have, could have, you know. Just, just play it the way it was. Trust me, David Padgett didn't lose the Virginia game. It was in these guys' hands. That thing was won. And I remember there were missed free throws by Louisville and fouling and tied Jerome, fouled on a three-point shot. Walking Jerome baseline made the first two free throws, missed the third one. Virginia whistled for a lane violation. And all Dang Adele had to do was inbound the ball, but he ran the baseline. There's Adele missing. And you can only run the baseline after a made basket. That was not a made basket, so a turnover. Virginia got the ball with .9 seconds, inbounded it. DeAndre Hunter banked on the three, and Louisville will be replaying those sequence of events in their heads all offseason. Adele draws the foul. Well, that's one of the things Dang Adele does. He's their most talented player. He's a next-level player, can do everything, and boy, he puts foul pressure on teams with his ability to take the ball to the basket. You know, sort of followed the path of Mathieng, born in Sudan and Africa, moved to Australia as a child, and finds himself at, in Louisville, Kentucky. That was the third team foul on Northern Kentucky, and as part of the NIT quarter system rules, there's no one and one anymore. So once you get to five team fouls in a quarter, the team that's been fouled will shoot free throws, and it'll be two free throws. So really just a penalty, no single bonus, essentially a double bonus. Those are the rules again for the NIT. They like to experiment with new rules, see what sticks. Wider painted area, extended three-point line. Shot clock resets to 20 seconds on an offensive rebound. Williams down low against Spalding. Good defense by Louisville, but the Cardinals touched it last. Well, I'm not sure who gets credit for the block, but if it's Mahmoud, this is a guy with 99 blocks on the year. Northern Kentucky as a team, 102 blocks. That yeah, might have been Spalding with the block right there, but. What Louisville has defensively is resistance at the rim, which enables them to go out and extend on the perimeter in these. Because if guys do get beat, they have shot blockers inside. Shot clock at three. Holland splits the D and draws the foul with one second on the shot clock. Well, foul is on Sutton, his second. When that shot clock's winding down, it's so important that the ball's in the, in the hands of a guy that could create, and this guy right there can create. Lavon Holland played at Ballard right here in Louisville. Reached the state championship as a senior, and one of his teammates is the man playing point guard for Louisville tonight, Quentin Snyder. Pretty good team. They also had Keelan Martin, who's at Butler. Got all the way to the state championship, and uh, of course, Snyder is Ballard's all-time scoring leader. He broke Allen Houston's record. When we talked to Holland at the shoot-around today, it was like, and they're going right up against one another right now. We said, who had the ball when you were at Ballard? He goes, Q did. He goes, I was the scorer, I was the shooter. Snyder against Holland. Now Spalding down low, good position. Ray Spalding dipping into that vast wardrobe of post moves. And you know what, Anish, what a great feed from Snyder. The bounce pass into the post. A feeding pass is, a bounce, is the bounce pass, which led him right into the shot. Three-point lead for the North. Spalding went for the steal. McDonald to Williams. McDonald sets up. Three-pointer is not there. Battle through the board. Louisville ball. Well, these two guys right here, they played a lot of basketball together in high school, facing off tonight as well. Really good guard matchup we have in the NIT in Louisville. Holland did not have many offers out of high school because he didn't qualify academically, so it was a roundabout journey for Holland to get to Northern Kentucky. He studied at the College of Southern Idaho, then went to Coffeyville Community College before Ending up with John Brandon of the Norse. But Anise, he's been a difference maker for this program. Horizon Tournament last year, MVP. At 22 against Kentucky in the NCAA Tournament. 
Nice block that time by Jordan Garnett, the senior from Indy. But we would really try to score on baseline out of bounds. We felt it was like special teams in football. These were our special situation, and we would chart how many points we got on baseline out of bounds, just like Louisville gets right there, and how many our opponents did. And we would chart that and mark it in the locker room the next day. A really important aspect of the game. All in the down low against Snyder. The two high school teammates going at each other again. Snyder against Holland. Snyder can't answer. Rebounded by Tate. But you know what Holland did on that possession that Snyder didn't do on the other end defensively? He contested the shot. The most important thing you could do defensively, I don't care whether you're man or zone, is contest shots. High hand, hand to ball. Those two have been matched up against each other quite a bit. Holland and Snyder. Holland, long three, well off the mark. <laughs> and he's hearing about it. Oops, a little too deep. Media timeout, 2.27 to go in this first half. When we come back, we'll hear from Louisville fans about the Cardinals' postseason fate. I mean, it was kind of up to Louisville. They uh, they had the opportunities to win games, and they just weren't able to win the games they needed to. No, I really feel like they should have been in Big Death. Their resume matches up with a lot of the teams that are in the tournament. It was up to our team to win, not for the NCAA. We're in a tournament. We don't like losing, no matter what tournament it is. We'd like to be in the, the big dance. Fate accompli at this point, but Dino Gaudio, at what point does this basketball game become about this basketball game and not whether a team wants to be in the NIT or would rather be someplace else. When does it stop becoming about motivation and becoming about basketball? And these were there. I think when this thing, we tipped off for the second quarter, these guys are worried about playing and doing their job. And I think uh, absolutely, they're just they're just involved in immersing the game right now. And now it's a three-point game, the North's on top. For, for me, I, I think effort shows itself on the defensive end of the floor and the backboard. Louisville, both teams defending really well, but Louisville's doing a really good job on the defensive end of the floor against Northern Kentucky. Garnett driving out Adele, rebound Walton, but back is not there, Spalding the rebound. Outlet Adele, nice move, but he took one too many steps, a little... Too much Euro. Yeah, absolutely. I love the Euro step because what it does, it gets you by the defender, especially a guy stepping in for a charge. One, two, three. Yeah, good call. Good call by You know what? Officials. I've seen guys get away with that, though. Yeah, those guys that play at that next level, the NBA. That's oh. where you see that. Our guy Harden could get away from that. I'm not sure that uh, Adele can. Brent Hampton, Craig Murley, and Edwin Young, the officials tonight, in case those in Louisville are wondering who not to buy drinks for. Yeah, the catch, left foot, right foot, one, left foot. two. Oh, wow, definitely, definitely. Louisville doing a good job on the baseline out of bounds right now by Northern Kentucky. Little flex action, baseline cut, coming off the screen. Here's Tate. Walton on the inside. Short clock right now. Six to shoot. Holland, too much dribbling. Two to shoot. McDonald has to get rid of it. Shot clock violation as Spalding did not let McDonald go anywhere. See, Anish, when a guy like McDonald, and I love him as a player, you give him the ball with a short clock, you're putting in a, him in a position of weakness. That's not his deal. He's not going to create with a short clock, so put that one on Holland a little bit. He should have possessed the ball and tried to make a play. There is Spalding. Did not start tonight due to a lower back helmet. Snyder misses. Adele on the rebound. Going the other way. A foul on Louisville. It's on Adele, his first. Yeah, you, you, you got to give your best guy. Put him in a position. We're looking at the clock. He now has it with two. Boy, tough, tough spot to put him in right there. Because he, he can't create for himself. He don't have enough time. Timeout, Northern Kentucky. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll step away. Less than a minute to go in this first half. 
26-23, Northern Kentucky on top of Louisville. Final minute of this second quarter, final minute of this first half, four quarters in the NIT this year. And coaches were telling us that impacts their substitution patterns. Press here by Louisville, Holland. And they'll get Spalding on a push. And the fans here in Louisville not so thrilled with the officiating right now. Well, like Louisville's favorite son, Muhammad Ali, you're going to have to take some hits, but you know what? you got to keep coming. They can't get too emotional with the officiating. And, Dino, that's now five team fouls on Louisville, so you get to five team fouls in a quarter. It's two shots for Northern Kentucky. Yeah, when you're pressing like Louisville was doing right there, fouling negates hustle. Just body him up. You have him trapped all the way on the baseline, 94 feet away. But we talked about taking hits. Has there been a team in the country that's taken more hits than Louisville? Couple knockdowns, couple standing eight counts. Wipe the gloves off, get back in there. Now we were talking to David Padgett about what this season has been like, and he kind of gave us the helicopter lips. Give him a lot of credit. I know this team fell short of expectations. There were final four expectations on this team. But it has been one tempest after another for six months. And he's lent a steady hand. He's hardly made any excuses. It, it, and he's, this is my third Louisville game this year. And he has handled everything with such dignity and class. It, it, it's been a first class situation the way he's handled this Louisville thing. You, you know what I remember? A mock cheer, a little bronze cheer right here. But when Andy Kennedy took over for Hugs, he won 20 games at Cincinnati that year, went to the NIT, and, and used it as a springboard to get the Ole Miss job. Now maybe David, maybe he gets the job here, maybe he does it. but I know one thing. He's a guy that athletic directors need to look at after what he's done here under a really adverse situation. No question. Holland into the bench after picking up his second. Fourth team foul. Snyder's three, no good. McDonald rips down another rebound. His sixth. And the Norse will hold for one. Now you want to take this shot with about six or five so that if you miss it, you get a, a chance at a second opportunity with an offensive rebound. Snyder presses out on Tate. McDonald nearly a turnover. Instead, they're going to get Perry with his third foul. And two shots coming for Northern Kentucky. Yeah, if you're, if you're going to go for this steal, you got to run through the passing lane, not towards the man. Northern, Northern Kentucky. Kentucky guys excited to be here and play. Eight guys from the state on this roster for NKU. Louisville with five. The Norse have two players from Louisville. LaVon Holland, who played his high school ball here. A walk-on, Darian Childress, also from Louisville. And you can't forget Tyler Sharp. He's not from Louisville, but he played for the Cardinals as a walk-on last season. Now, Anish, what Northern Kentucky needs to do is pick up three-quarter court so that you turn Louisville once or twice in the backcourt to burn time off the clock with 5.3 to play in the half. Timeout, David Padgett. It is a 30-23 to 23 lead for the Norse, their largest lead of the game. Well, we've mentioned it, the one game that may have changed Louisville's fortune, really the one second that could have changed Louisville's fortune. The Cardinals against Virginia on the 1st of March had a double-digit lead in the second half. Virginia came back with nine-tenths of a second remaining. All Louisville had to do was inbound the ball. Dan Goodell runs the baseline. He was not allowed to do so. It results in a turnover. Virginia gets the ball back. DeAndre Hunter banks in a three. Virginia wins, robbing Louisville of what would have been one of the best wins in the country, the best win in the country, and instead Louisville ends up in the NIT. Five seconds to go in this first half. Adele. King. No good. And we go to halftime with the boys from Highland Heights owning a seven-point lead. 30 to 23, Northern Kentucky on top of Louisville.
After this break, we'll send you to the studio with Chris Cotter, Chris Pitola, and Dallin Cup. About ready for the start of the second half here in Louisville. Yes, they are dancing. Both teams would like to be dancing in a different tournament, but here they are. Round one of this NIT, the winner taking on either Vermont or Middle Tennessee. Anish Raf, Dino Gaudio, defense was the story for both teams in the first half. It really was, and the Norse were outstanding on the defensive end of the floor. They gave up just a few dribble penetrations. Here's one right there that Holland stays with him, contests the shot. And I'll tell you what, Anish, the Norse on the defensive end of the floor were outstanding. And maybe we got to revisit whether the Louisville Cardinals were ready to play. We may have given them too much credit early. Listen, coaching is constantly dealing with athletes who want to do what's comfortable. But comfortable is what gets you big. Coaching is challenging and confronting certain behavior. David Pageant should have gotten after these guys at halftime because you know what? Their behavior and their attitude wasn't great in that second quarter. And that first quarter, you thought that Louisville appeared to be ready, but 2 of 15 in the second quarter, shot selection was poor, and uh, surprisingly only one steal in the entire first half for Louisville. And that's how this team's built, stealing the ball, deflections, they chart deflections, which is indicative of how hard they're playing. Here's Dan Goodell, one for six in the first half. And he gets the turnaround. Oh, wow. Louisville's leading scorer at more than 15 a game. Drew McDonald, 10 points, six rebounds. First team all-conference selection in the horizon. Great feed inside. Tate has it spin out. God, he's talked about when teams are ready to play or not. Energy and emotion, what their body language is like. And I think the fourth one, because it was almost individual play in that second quarter, maybe some guys trying to showcase what they can do individually. Spalding canceled Holland. Shot fake, Tate. His pass deflected. There's the active hands. And then Tate fouled by Sutton, who picks up his third foul. I think Louisville on the offensive end, big size advantage in the first half. NKU outscores them 14 to 8 in the paint. Hey, let's let our offense be created through execution. Let's don't try to create things one on one individually. And that's what Louisville was doing in that second quarter. Jalen Tate at the free throw line. His brother, Jay Sean Tate, plays for Ohio State. The Buckeyes, the five seed in the NCAA tournament, they'll open against a dangerous South Dakota State Jackrabbit team. And, and Tate, a terrific job at Ohio State. Almost 13 points a game, six rebounds. 56% from the field for the Buckeyes. Snyder trying to drive through a double. It's a turnover. Tate, eyes are up. Leaves it for Walton. So you're seeing Northern Kentucky down ball screens on the side, which created the turnover, the run out in the basket for NKU. Entry pass to Spalding. And we get a foul on McDonald. Well, when we say icing the ball screen, in other words, they're forcing the ball down the side. Watch how Holland won't allow Snyder to come over. And there's the big guy. Really good defense and really good offense. Like, when you're in transition situation like Louisville that was, you should see guys talking and fingers pointing and a down the three. But transition defense is about communication. So what's the offensive adjustment? Well, I, I think offensively, you got to create the screen. Let's move the ball. It needs to be good on offense. You need an inside game, and you need a screening game, and you need to be a little more patient if you're Louisville. V.J. King down the lane, drops it off for Spalding. A Louisville turnover. The first four of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship is tomorrow 
on True TV beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 Pacific. So today's the day to find out what channel True TV is. It's my favorite day one Twitter question on the internet. Where is True TV? <laughs> You gotta dig that one out and find it on your uh, cable TV package. A couple of quick fouls on McDonald. And he's got three now, the leading score and rebounder for Northern Kentucky. McDonald remains on the floor. I love the new rules for the NIT. Now right. he'll come out for Carson Williams. You know what else I wish they would have tried? The sixth foul. I wanna see this guy playing more tonight. Four quarters, wider paint, extended three-point line. Shot clock going to 20 on an offensive rebound. All that not enough for you, Dino? Nah, I want that one more thing. I want to see guys playing, not sitting. Well, Adele is playing with purpose for Louisville in this second half. Well, and we saw two rook ball reversals right there from one side of the floor to the other. They also played inside out, and it was the skip pass. And there's a deflection and a steal. The long arms of Spalding. Adele at the other end. Now we got a little bit of emotion out of Louisville. And you know what, Anissa starts with their defense. The steal, the run out, the extra pass. This is a team that lives off of steals and deflections. There's one right there. There's no defense to be played by NKU with that steal. And all night, Louisville's been playing five on five because they haven't had any steals or runouts. And give credit to Northern Kentucky's offense, but Louisville's defense needs to be out more in passing rates. Meanwhile, Dangadell has all nine of Louisville's third quarter points. He was one for six with four points in the first half. Four for four, nine points here in this third quarter. Well, if Dan Goodell, and I, and I said it earlier, is the most talented player, a next level player, then he's a guy that should step up his game and have more of an impact on the game like he's having right now. Williams down low, and that's a goaltender. When you're pressing, you have two trappers, two steel men, and a safety. If Mahmoud's gonna come up and leave the basket, boy, he's better get that steal because he's the safety, like a free safety in football. Nobody should get behind him. Adele's had the hot hand. Mahmoud. And we get a foul, a blocking foul. Uh, Walton. Yeah, great, great move right here. And you know what they were doing? NKU spent a lot of time today attacking the press and the shoot around. And one of the other aspects of it, they had a coach with paddles banging guys near the backboard. And the paddles also extended where trying to simulate that guy right there that just took the left-handed jump hook. John Brannon told us the answer, the only answer that Northern Kentucky has for Louisville's length is physicality. Yeah, absolutely. Physicality negates quickness. And that's what Northern Kentucky needs to do, both on offense and defense, Anish. Holland kicks to the corner. Walton blocked by Mahmoud, the ACC's leader in rejections. Snyder doesn't go. Rebound to Walton. 36-32. Shot clock at 10. Tate rejected by Mahmoud. Spalding leading the break. And fouled by Holland. That's now three on LeVon Holland. It's a four-point lead for the Norse. We have new rules in the NIT. We'll ask Dino if he likes them so far.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. We're at the KFC Yum Center, round one of the NIT, Louisville and Northern Kentucky. Winner gets the victor of Middle Tennessee and Vermont. All right, Dino, we have new rules in the NIT. Four quarters, the shot clock off an offensive rebound resets to 20 instead of 30. Wider painted area, extended three-point line. The quarter system means five team fouls that reset after every quarter before you go to your bonus. What do you make of them so far? Do you I, like it? I like the new rules coming in. I still like them. You know what we have, and it's just a small sample size, but these two teams combined, six for 27 from three. You wonder if the additional almost two feet pushing the three-point line back has mattered. And you know what? The, 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 the shot's another miss from three in the corner because it is perhaps a little deeper. You, you know, we would talk a lot about this is a team game played by individuals. You've you got to accept the challenge of your individual matchup. And at halftime, when we play like that, I get after guys individually a little bit. Maybe David Padgett has done that. And I know one thing, Adele has come to play in the second half. Spalding makes it a two-point game. On the floor right now, Holland and McDonald for the Norse both. Have three fouls. That's Northern Kentucky's two best players. Well, I think you're seeing John Brandon trust those guys to play with three fouls. Little rock right there. Every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Basketball Championships can be seen on the ESPN family of networks. And uh, before you anoint it, the UConn Invitational, let's not forget what happened last year. Yeah, I, 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 absolutely. And, and he's, right now when you're looking at Louisville, th their advantage is inside. Let's go inside, especially with three fouls on McDonald. Let's don't get preoccupied with it, but let's go at him. Which means going to race balding inside. Snyder instead will drive it, and he is fouled from behind. And, and I like the recognition, a mismatch, a quickness difference from Snyder to Tyler Sharp. So let's just take him to the basket. That's five team fouls on Northern Kentucky. So Louisville will shoot two free throws for every successive foul for the remainder of this third quarter. And this kid shooting 88% coming into the game tonight, a terrific free throw shooter. David Padgett raved about what Snyder has meant to this program. Hometown hero, committed early to Louisville, and then it was Louisville that backed off on Snyder, so he reopened his commitment. At one point, was ready to go to Illinois and play for John Gross, but Louisville re-entered the picture, and now Snyder is a freshman, but Chris Jones was off the team, led Louisville to the Elite Eight, and he has become a steady point guard in the toughest basketball conference in America. Well, he got the area code 502 tattooed on his shoulder. You know where he's staying. McDonald against Spalding draws the contact. Plus one. Boy, you know what? Not a lot of lift, not a lot of athleticism, but you know what? Man, he knows how to play. You just can't play this game with your body. You got to play it with your mind as well. And man, McDonald does that. And his mom, who was a basketball player at Northern Kentucky and also a varsity coach was telling me before the game that you talk about playing basketball with your mind. McDonald from the very beginning would watch games on TV, take a dry erase board, there's Mom Christie, and just draw plays. And it got to the point when Christie would go to coach her girls team, she'd have trouble locating the dry erase board because Drew would have it pre-game and would, would be drawing up all sorts of plays. And in fact, he brings suggestions to his mom as Snyder knocks down a triple to tie the game. And he said, that's the first time we've seen Northern Kentucky go 1-3-1 one, one defense and a perfect offensive possession by Louisville, which is the diagonal pass opposite. They get an offensive foul as McMahon draws the charge. Two on Faulkner. And you're starting to hear the sound and fury from this Louisville crowd. 
Now Tate back in on defense for Sharp. And an adjustment from Brandon putting Jordan Garnett on Quinn Snyder now. No, no, they're back into 1 3 1. My bad, Anish. Snyder long three. Not this time. Sharp, a former Louisville walk on with the rebound. Two possessions out of the 1 3 1 from NKU. One stop, one score for Louisville. Northern Kentucky led by seven at the half. Go back inside. There you go. Good matchup here. Spalding against McDonald. McDonald turns it over. Here comes Adele. Adele off balance. Catches it off the glass. Louisville with the lead. Okay, I'm not sure who I'm more impressed with. Louisville's third quarter run or the fans. Man, these are basketball fans in this city. McDonald bodying up Spalding. Over Spalding, no good. Offensive rebound, Garnett. Put back, not there. And it finally goes for Jordan Garnett, the senior from Indianapolis. Well, Inez, Inez, you're saying the absence of Mahmoud on the inside. Now Spalding against McDonald, who's got the three fouls. Spalding. McDonald, you saw, he had to back off with those three fouls. And he did. What's, what Spalding needs to do is go at him, though. Don't fade away. How about Sharp? The former Cardinals walk out with a chance for a three-point play. That's how you play below the foul line like that little guy did right there. Take that ball up there strong. I know one thing, Tyler Sharp is like six foot, but I'll tell you, what a strong kid this is. Love the shot phase. See how he jumped right into him, drew the contact, played through it and able to finish. Spent last year with Louisville. He's still a walk-on, just now with a different team. Now NKU goes back to man-to-man -to -man with Tate on Snyder. Adele has had a big quarter, 11 in the third for Louisville. Make it 13. Really good defense. Terrific offense from Adele. He's just taken over the game, which he has the potential to do if he's a next-level guy, which we think he is. Northern Kentucky switches it. Well, here's the runner. There's the steal. It's balding with a deflection. Terrific use of the body by Adele. And you know what? You want your guys on the bench to be into the game, and Louisville is. Largest lead for the Norse of Northern Kentucky, seven. That was the halftime margin. Louisville tied it at one point in this third quarter. It's now a one-point game. And now, there was a moment in that second quarter where Louisville shot selection was off. Defense was inconsistent. Whatever David Padgett said to his team at halftime, he's had his desired effect. Yeah, and it wasn't about, you know, plays or anything. It was about energy and emotion, and now they're playing with more of that in this third quarter. Here comes Sharp. Final 40 seconds. McMahon off the steal. Perry, the birthday boy. What the flush! Happy birthday, Darius Perry! <laughs> Elite athleticism on that play right there. Wow. He blew out all the candles. McDonald spinning, beats the shot clock, but he traveled with 1.9, and it's Louisville ball, the Cardinals, with a one-point lead. Yeah, with 1.9, you think they would try to throw the ball into the front court? 
Looks like they're going to inbound to McMahon here. McMahon. That takes us to the end of the third quarter. Louisville outscoring Northern Kentucky 22 to 14. Dan Goodell, 13 in the quarter. He set fire to the rain. And Darius Perry on his 19th birthday. Opening presents early. Two schools separated by 100 miles, and when it comes to Division I history, more than 100 years. One program storied, the other in just its second year of Division I eligibility for the postseason. And Ishraf Dino Gaudio still. This is an opportunity for Northern Kentucky to brand their program even further. They made the NCAA tournament last year. What an opportunity it is for them tonight. It really is. But you know what, Anish, from a coaching perspective, sometimes it's not about offenses and defenses. It's about effort and execution. And man, in the third quarter, did Louisville bring the effort? And that was the question surrounding the Cardinals as McDonald misses. And we get a foul. So sometimes as a coach, there's no adjustments, adjustments that need to be made. It's just a better effort, and that's where Louisville was, and I'm sure Padgett told them that at halftime. Third foul on Walton. Coming into this game, there was a lot of chatter. How much does Louisville want to be here? There were reports yesterday that Louisville had a players-only vote before the ACC tournament, and the result of that vote was reportedly to reject a bid to the NIT. McMahon from the outside. After the second quarter, it seemed you're not sure where Louisville was above the shoulders. But 22 points in the third quarter, right back into this game. And now a four-point lead, and now a turnover. And this is why he sits off the good defense. Perry, and the travel. Time for meaningful returns, brought to you by TD Ameritrade. David Padgett, Louisville's acting head coach. You know, the smart money is that once Louisville's NIT run ends, Louisville will probably be looking for another head coach. But with what Padgett's done, he's going to have opportunities, should that be the case, as McMahon has provided a little spark. And Louisville with a six-point lead, its biggest of the night. Good is Ryan McMahon. The three and then the high soft shot off of the glass from Sarasota, Florida, Cardinal Mooney. Well, I'll tell you what, you talk about X factors. There's not a bigger X factor for Louisville than this kid right here in the passing lane. Look how high this ball is on the glass and so soft because he shot it so high, it negated the shot clock attempt. What a terrific little player that guy is, number 30. Not the quickest guy, but really clever. Understands angles and understands how to play. Perfect from the field tonight. Ryan McMahon. Eight forty to go here in this fourth quarter. Now, this is what Northern Kentucky feared. Louisville's length, their, their deflections on defense. Nice feed, oh, high low action, but Holland missed. And what a great call by John Brandon coming out of the timeout. Perry, the freshman, turns it over. Gets it back. But you're seeing Louisville extending their defense out in passing lanes. McMahon with the steal the last time, so great call by John Brandon. Hey, let's spread them out. Let's go back door. Man, you got to finish that play. Since halftime, Louisville has outscored in Northern Kentucky 29 to 14. And a seven point deficit. Now an eight point lead. Active hands again. McDonald to the floor. Yeah, 
Yeah, when McMahon had his hand on the ball, his legs were out of bounds. That's a really good call right there. To Max, McMahon and McDonald. Anish, you've got to fake a pass if you're Northern Kentucky, and they need to go back to some dribble, ball dribble entries into offense because Louisville's really out in passing lanes. Defense! 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 McDonald kicks to Sharp. Spalding skies for the board. Louisville shooting 75% since halftime. Winner of this game gets the winner of Middle Tennessee and Vermont in round two. E.J. King, Sutton. Northern Kentucky, regular season champs in the Horizon League. He made the NCAA tournament a season ago and lost to Kentucky in round one. And a hard-fought nine-point loss. He playing through McDonald. Now, there's the ball screen. They switch it. Holland tried to get it to McDonald, but it's out of bounds. And he would have got, got it to him if it would have been a bounce pass. I, I love when teams would switch on us and you have a big guy on the guard. Drive the big like he did right there. But that should have been a bounce pass in the McDonald. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Garnett. Williams now. Five to shoot. He doesn't see the clock. Sharp. Beat the shot clock and the rebound yeah. by Spalding. Uh, no clock recognition right there by NKU. I'd be yelling at my assistants on the side. Count it down for us. Count it down. Now, sometimes the crowd counts it down for you, but you can't trust no. those numbers all the time. <laughs> Here's V.J. King, all the way to the basket, and he's able to draw the foul on Garnett. Well, defense has been a difference for Louisville, and I'll tell you what, it's created offense for them. Louisville up 52-44 on the North. The NCAA Women's Championship begins Friday at noon Eastern on ESPN2 with the first round. Check local listings for the game in your area. And remember that all are streaming live on the ESPN app. The Louisville men did not make the NCAA tournament hosting an NIT game. Don't tell these fans that this tournament and these games mean nothing. They've been tremendous tonight. They, they have been outstanding. And East, this is one of the great fan bases in all the country. And... That's why this is one of the best jobs in the country. We're talking top five, top seven jobs in America because of the tradition, the facilities, the fan base. Man, and they understand basketball. And I think many of them understand, too, the importance of what David Padgett brought to the table this year. If it's only a one-year thing for Padgett, first head coaching job, he's going to have many years as a Division I head coach. He'll never have a season more challenging than this one. He told us today how much he learned, how much he grew as a head coach having to navigate this Tempest as Holland hits a three. There isn't many Hall of Fame coaches that had to have gone through a season like David Padgett did this year. And each when he started the program the first 10, 12 days, he didn't have any assistance with him either. He was coaching the team by himself with managers. How about Perry? Largest lead for Louisville. Perry's got eight, twice a season average. Holland again. Holland. The senior from Louisville, and it's 57-50. Now, NKU need a stop, a score, and a stop, and they're right back in this thing. Dan Goodell at the scores table for Louisville. He's got 17 to lead all scores. Three ball Sutton, rebound to McDonald. And Drew McDonald closing in on his 18th double-double of the season. And, and Carson Williams, a really good, really good job of contesting the jump shot. Make him miss, don't hope he misses. And Tate was bumped, foul on the floor. Just the first team foul on Louisville in this fourth quarter. 
And it's on McMahon, his second. And these Louisville has lost some close games, as we know. If NKU could get this thing to maybe five or even four down the stretch here, all of a sudden, pressure again on the Louisville Cardinals to finish, which they haven't been able to do. Adele checking in the steal by Sutton. McMahon has it taken away. Four on two, move it. Holland, Garnett, he threw it away. Well, poor John Brandon's about to pull his hair out right there. Four on two situation. Just move the ball. A little more length on Quinn Snyder right now with Tate on him. McMahon, back iron, rebound Garnett. McDonald against the smaller Snyder, back out to Garnett. Battle for the rebound down low, and they're going to get Spalding for going over the back, his third. Well, Northern Kentucky playing inside out. The kick out to Garnett, and I know he's a 41% three-point shooter on the year, but that's really not his game. Drive the closeout right there and get the ball back into the paint. They'll say the foul is on Snyder. And we talked about it. NKU scores on baseline out of bounds. And I love the way McDonald took the ball to the other side of the rim. Used the rim as a protector to take away the contest. 15 and 9 for Drew McDonald. First team all conference in the horizon. Sutton contact at the rim and a foul. Well, this has been a great get for Louisville. Dwayne Sutton, who the transfer from UNC Asheville. As a freshman in the championship game, he was the MVP of the Southern, Southern Conference Tournament. 25 points, 18 rebounds. A double-digit score in his lone season with UNC Asheville. Dantes Walton picked up his fourth foul. Three team fouls on the Norse, two on Louisville. The way it works in this year's NIT, five fouls in a quarter. And the opposing team goes to the free throw line for two. There's no more one and one. There's no single bonus straight to the penalty or double bonus. And you know what I like about it, Anish? Once the quarter's over, a clean slate. Yes. You're back to five fouls before you shoot the bonus. And then it's on the fifth, it's two fouls. It's not the one and one. And I think it'll make the game go a little quicker as well. John Brandon's Just, uh, life right there. Fifty-nine, fifty-one. Ten to shoot. Garnett. No good. Battle for the board. Louisville basketball. Yeah, I think Garnett with that short clock. We talked about it before. Drive the ball. And Brandon trying to get his defense to extend, pick up a little further. The Norse just four of 22 from three. Here comes Perry. Attacking. NKU got to find a way to get easy baskets. One of those is with the break. They need to push the ball off missed shots. McDonald against Adele. And he turns it over. Drew McDonald has himself a double-double. Does his team have a comeback in it? Northern Kentucky down eight, 254 left. Chris Cotter in studio. Davidson winning the 18th turn. He may have knocked Notre Dame out of the NCAA tournament, but they're in the NIT taking on Hampton. Bonzi and company coming up next. And Radford beats LIU Brooklyn in the first four. They reward Villanova on Thursday. Chris, thank you. Here, Louisville with a seven point lead on Northern Kentucky. Sports Center tonight. They'll fill you in on all the moves in the NFL. Miami Dolphins currently. 
trying to iron out contract details with Dino Gaudio, and <laughs> I'm sure they will talk about the injury to DeAndre Hunter, sixth man of the year in the ACC for Virginia. A wrist injury, he is out for the tournament. A huge blow to the number one overall seed as Dan Goodell calls a timeout with a five-second violation looming. And he's, he was a difference maker for this Virginia basketball team, both on the defensive end. A guy that shoots 38% three. He's the one that hit the big shot to put down Louisville with nine-tenths of a second. And, uh, boy, I feel really bad for Tony Bennett and Virginia, but I feel even worse for the kid. An opportunity to showcase his talents and to play in the NCAA tournament. He's not going to get that opportunity right now. Is Virginia a Final Four team? without DeAndre Hunter? I, I don't I, I don't think so. Are I they a so. Sweet 16 team well, without I, Hunter? I'll tell you what, the committee did no favors to that team having to go through Arizona or Kentucky uh, early in that tournament. But uh, So, no, I, I don't think they are. Wow. Now you go back a few years when Tony Bennett had a one seed. Justin Anderson had that injured wrist going into the tournament, and Virginia was not itself, ended up losing early. They, they had six starters, and that, that was their sixth starter, in essence, DeAndre Hunter. Perry from the outside does not get the bounce. Why, why take that shot that quickly with a seven-point lead and 2.30 to play? Here comes Holland. Offensive rebound, Walton put back, and it's a five-point game. And, and that's what you need, easy baskets with the break and second-shot opportunities like they had right there. Adele nearly fell out of bounds. Tap to Snyder. Touch pass. Spalding. Well, give Dwayne Sutton a lot of credit for saving that uh, a possession with the deflection forward to his teammate. McDonald lets it fly. Here comes Perry. He's got numbers. Behind the back to Adele. Going the other way. Sharp. You know what, like, like, you're talking about Darius Perry right there. As a point guard, your decision-making is just as important as your skill set. What are you thinking right there? You, 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 know what, you know what this decision gets you? What a great touch pass right there by Sutton. Saved the possession. But Darius Perry, he's on the sideline right now talking to Padgett. You know what? That's where he should be right now. The foul was on Sutton, his fourth. End it, end it at games. It's not about making great plays. And Holland fouled on the drive. It's eliminating the bad ones. And how about the confidence Padgett shows in the freshman sending Perry right back in? Sutton just fouled out. Four fouls for Louisville, excuse me, Dino. Three for Northern Kentucky. You get to five, and you're shooting free throws. Sharp. Not there. Yeah, now the ball's in the hands who it should be uh, right here with Prince Snyder. You got a run clock, patience. We should go under 10 on the shot clock before we take one if we're Louisville. Here comes Perry. <laughs> Adele down the lane. And we get a foul on oh, Northern Kentucky. It's on Garnett. A little bit of a bailout call right there because that was a bad shot right there. Boy, he made it. Yeah, I know they called a foul, but he might, he might have come down on the floor there where it would have been a walk. Four team fouls for both teams, so both Louisville and Northern Kentucky will shoot free throws for the rest of this fourth quarter. Yeah, there is Perry, a freshman. He's going to be a really good player. Wheeler High School, Powder Springs, Georgia. But man, you just can't play this game with your body. you got to play from the shoulders up, especially if you're a point guard. Now, one thing Perry can do, man, he could put pressure on the basketball one-on-one. -on -one. Sharp. Spalding is there. 13 rebounds for Spalding. And Adele fouled by Holland. 
Four fouls now on Holland and free throws coming for Dengadel. You know, Anisha, I'm not sure if he took an accidental elbow or shoulder to the face right there. Boy, it looked it might have been cheek to cheek right here. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Dang Adele, strong athletic driver. Boy, does he play with a lot of energy. Adele in the second half. Six of six from the field. He's got 14 of his 18 after halftime. Holland bleeding. So they will attend to him. He has blood on his jersey. Looks like he's got a bloody nose. You're trying to find guys who separate themselves, and a lot of times it just comes down to the intangibles. First to the floor, chargers, workers. Yeah, the officials went to the monitor, and, and what we were told by Edwin Young was, as we saw, just face to face, was not a flagrant one. Yeah, a little bit of blood coming out of the nose of LaVon Holland right there. A much different Louisville team in the second half, Anish. You know, that image, in some ways, a microcosm for this game because both coaches told us their message was play for each other. Now, both of these teams had dreams of the NCAA tournament. Horizon League regular season champions in Northern Kentucky. Louisville right on that bubble, waiting it out on Selection Sunday. They thought they would get in after beating Florida State in the second round of the ACC tournament. And both coaches told us it's you know, we few, we happy few, we band of brothers. He who sheds his blood with me today. And you now that image, that image speaks to that because it's this is one last chance, one last month perhaps to play with your teammates because that opportunity may not come again. And in an East, you know, when they would have those senior nights, when we would have them, we would have our players in the practices before those seniors. Talk about with the careers, man. I'm telling you, those are the most emotional times that you ever have as a team. Guys would be like crying in that locker room because their teammates met, meant so much to them. I, I think the greatest motivation is not letting the guy sitting next to you down. That's what this is all about, and that's what we're seeing out of both of these teams tonight. Now, for all the talk about Louisville and their motivation and their energy level tonight, would they want to play here? Well, for the first half, they trudged through the game. Different team that came out of the locker room at halftime. One minute. Adele's got 20, 16 in the second half. Faulkner. To McDonald, that's a goaltend. Now, Northern Kentucky has to pick up. We're going to try to deny the entry pass, maybe get a five count. And then we got a trap right here, whoever catches the ball. Holland is still on the bench. He had that bloody nose. They're getting him out of his jersey. Really good free throw shooters on the floor for Louisville now on the perimeter. They're good just free throw shooting team. Spalding away from the ball. A 65% free throw shooter. Fourth foul on McDonald. LaVon Holland is senior. This is homecoming for him. He played his high school ball at Ballard. Louisville native. It's been a long journey, his collegiate career. Three stops before Northern Kentucky. He's not going to finish this game on the bench. No, I love it. And, and he transformed this program. John Brandon talks about him coming and being the leader that he was and how he led him last year to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, you, you know what? Leadership in these, sometimes it's, it's how you carry yourself and how you project. And, and that's what this kid's doing right now. Nine-point game, 40 seconds to go. Here's Holland. Holland, long three over Adele. 
McDonald the offensive rebound and put back. And a timeout by John Brennan with 28 seconds. There we'll is Drew McDonald's mom, Christy. We'll give him a half a, an assist on that right there. And that was an assist? Yeah. <laughs> the same way Derek Wittenberg had an assist? Yes, yeah, yeah. And our guy D always tells us it was an assist. It was a pass. Boy, he is really deep. He was really deep with this right here. You know, old reliable is right there, Drew McDonald with the putback. How about McDonald? 19 points, 13 rebounds. His 34th career double-double, 18th this season. Northern Kentucky's leading scorer and a rebounder. Two-time, first-team All-Horizon League, and a man of all seasons, inside, outside, in the paint. And, and then she could do it all from the perimeter off drives, three-point shooting. I'll, I'll tell you what, this kid could play in a lot of programs around the country. Although not the quickest and not the most athletic, but he is the ultimate stretch four where he could space you out and pull out bigger guys away from the basket. And maybe that's why you've seen Spalding on him so much this evening as opposed to Mahmoud being in the game. Bob Christie told us that Drew's been playing since he was a year and a half. He'd be <laughs> shooting at baskets naked in the garage back then. Her story, not yours. I'm just the messenger, but here we are, 65, 58, 28 seconds. Snyder is fouled. Yeah, not, not much choice right now is who you're going to foul. Snyder two for two in the game and comes in shooting 88% from behind the three-point line. And Holland from the free throw line, I'm sorry. Has fouled out. He was wearing the number 10 jersey because his number 30 jersey had blood on it. And that's the last that we have seen of him. It's been a terrific career. Began in many ways in Louisville, and it ends in Louisville. I'll tell you, this kid has a chance to play somewhere in Europe, overseas. He is a really talented point guard that could handle it, shoot it, create for others. And his old high school teammate, Quentin Snyder, at the line. Snyder, one of the leaders on this team. Nine points tonight for Snyder. Louisville by eight. Faulkner to Tate. McDonald not there, and it's tipped to King. Northern Kentucky backs off. It was a valiant effort. And for all the talk about did Louisville want to be here, would they be motivated by the NIT? The Cardinals will continue to play into March. I tell you, only a bad 10-minute play, and that was in the second quarter. But after that, they were outstanding down the stretch, especially in the third quarter to come out of the locker room. Dang Adele with a big second half, 16 after halftime. He finished with 20. The season is over for Northern Kentucky. Louisville will get the winner of Middle Tennessee and Vermont in the second round of the NIT. For Dino Gaudio and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Anish Shroff. Coming up next, it's more NIT first round action as Christy McDonald looks on. That's a sad face. We've got Hampton and Notre Dame coming up next.